Right, what I'm doing here is um, annealing the joint strip. This is to join the uh, barrel of the boiler. The real time took about three minutes. Um, the burner I've got on there isn't really big enough. I, I have got some uh, bigger burners, which I should have used really. But um, anyway, that took about three minutes, uh, just heating it up to red. And then I'm going to let it cool down uh, naturally. You can um, just dunk it in a bucket of water if you want, but... I don't want it to um, distort because I've got to put a slight curve on it. Alright, in this video I'm going to do a bit of silver soldering. Um, I've got this uh, butt strip. Um, as you see, that's that's not really under any, any tension. So what I'm going to do is, is rivet the butt strip in there. Let's see if you can... Yep, goes in there anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is get that uh, marked out. I'll just show you on the drawing um, how I'm going to lay it out. Right, what I've got to do is come in. What I've got to do is to come in from the end and the, the butt strip actually sort of fits in there um, between the uh, boiler tube end plate which goes in there eventually so I've got to allow enough room for that because um, this boiler is designed around having a single copper tube with no obstruction so I've got to make allowances for that because I couldn't buy a, a three and three quarter copper tube um, it's no longer available um, so anyway, I had to roll my own, and I wanted to roll my own anyway because it, it makes for a nice, clean, straight joint down the boiler. I have seen them where normally they'd be joined here, and I have seen them where they sort of kick off and, and don't look very nice. So anyway, getting back to the job in hand. So I've got to come in um, to a certain distance at this end, and then a certain distance this end for a little flange on the throat plate so the strip will effectively be on there something like that then this will make up that difference um actually it goes that way will make up that difference and the flange strip uh no i haven't got anything that i can demonstrate that with this this will be where the throat plate goes anyway so that that will be an allowance for that and then when these are all soldered in it completely seals off this gap which won't be there once I've once I've set this out and clamped this together riveted this on and silver soldered it there won't be a gap so anyway that's my plan so let's get that laid out Right, that's the, uh, that's the end position, that's where it's going to go, um, but obviously on the inside, um, yeah, that's that way pointing out, so that will actually be on the inside like that. Right, I'm going to take that over now to the um, press, um, yeah, drill press I think, and drill these holes. Uh, I'm just going to clamp it together to start with. Um, where are my clamps? Right, I've got it clamped together now. Let's take it over to the drill press and we get the 3 16 holes for the rivets 
drill through. I'll get this plate clamped in as well um, just before I take it over. I mean, I can't show you that because it's on the inside, but I'm, only, I'm just going to clamp it in position anyway. It did wander a little bit that drill but I'm not too fussed about it because um, th this is not precision because these are going to be flattened over and they're really only to hold it in position until it's silver soldered and then they'll all be filed off so I don't mind if it wanders a little bit let's just try another one anyway <laughs> Drill bit in a bit further. Right, use these Clico clamps because These are uh, left over from my uh, aeroplane building days. I used to have thousands of these. I've only got about 20 at the most now. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole different story. But they, they'll now, what they're doing is clamping the, the strip. So it, it won't move at all now. So I think what I'll do is Do another hole up this end and clamp this end and then that'll be in a pretty good position. I think if I'll be able to drill that other hole with that one in. Let's get where I can see it.
right. That's complete now. All of the holes are drilled. So I can now take all of the clamps off, deburr it all, put it in the pickle, put it back together with the clamp, uh, the Clico clamps in every other one, and then I'll rivet the empty holes and then pull the Clicos out, rivet the others um, after it's all been fluxed up, and then I can silver solder it all. So I'll just take it apart, get it cleaned up. Uh, I won't bother to film that, but anyway. I'll be back when it's all cleaned up and I think, yeah, I'll put it in the pickle first and then I'll uh, come back. Right, pickled everything. Um, even the rivets. Right, that's what I use for the pickle, it's just household um, citric acid. Um, I've never had a problem with it, works okay. I've used the proper pickling. Um, this is no different, uh, only a hell of a lot cheaper. Do a little bit of a manual clean up on this but because the, the pickle doesn't really um, clean off the sharpie. Um, I did mark this with a couple of dots. You probably can't see them, but it doesn't matter anyway. The dots face forward so that it will align properly. So let's give that a bit of a rough up. Make sure everything's 100% clean. The reason I'm wearing gloves is not, not to keep my hands clean. I just don't want any greasy fingers over the surface. So, let's just get it clamped back up. This is my rivet squeezer, um, another leftover from my uh, aeroplane building days. Um, it's, it's only going to get, well, it's only going to get this first row here and first row there. And then I've made a die to go in the vise, you'll see that in a bit. But let's just get these couple of rivets in the end first. those two in, a couple in the other end. rivets in. Let's see if I can get a picture. Yeah, you can just about see in there. Right, so now I'll get it all fluxed up and uh, get it uh, silver soldered up. Fingers crossed.